This is the Kansas City Chief. And with him is his partner, Warpaint, a seven-year veteran of professional football. This is Hank Stram, and as coach of the Chiefs, he has the horses necessary for one of the NFL's finest teams. Stram and his Chiefs are famous for unusual innovations. They are daring, dynamic, and physical. But most important of all, they are winners. Today, the Chiefs have their eye on a new opponent, the Washington Redskins, a team they've never played before. Under their new coach and cheerleader, George Allen, Washington is the surprise story of the league. They are unbeaten in five games, the only team in the NFL to remain undefeated. Like Hank Stram, George Allen takes the personal approach in his coaching philosophy, and it's paid off handsomely. So today we have a clash of two first place teams and two powerful coaching personalities. This game is vital to each. For the Redskins, it will be the sternest test of the young season because Kansas City has dedicated itself to regaining the championship in 1971. In turn, Kansas City is confronting a squad of veterans with their own war cry. For Washington's over the hill gang, the future is now. Today in Kansas City, before the largest sports crowd in that city's history, something will give. I'm Bob Delaney, and this is the NFL Game of the Week. Mike's been talking about sending his boys to his alma mater since they were born. When he started getting ready for it financially, he talked to me. Now the same State Farm agent who helped you plan for just a case can help you with what could be with education savings plans and other funding options. For help with banking, insurance, and investing, talk to your agent today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Yes, you're lovely. Never, ever change. Keep that breathless charm. Won't you please arrange it, cause I love you, just the way you look tonight, just the way you look tonight. Ch -ch -ch -jump for joy. With new Odor Eaters Plus. Odor Eaters Plus is the only insole with podiatric arch support, plus protection on demand against odor and wetness. Ritz chips. Ritz chips? Toasted. Mm, the buttery taste of Ritz. With a crunch that won't quit. Often toasted. <laughs> New Ritz chips. They're toasted. And believe me, I know toasted. You know the athletes. Anna Kornikova is sex with a tennis racket attached. But do you know their stories? He never shows the slightest remorse at anything he's done. The award-winning Sports Century. 8 p.m. weeknights on ESPN Classic. Washington has won the way of most winners by making few mistakes. But on their first play of the game, their fine running back, Larry Brown, fumbled, and Willie Lanier recovered on the Washington 28. This would be only the beginning for Willie Lanier. Now the Redskin defense, which has been so instrumental in Washington's undefeated season, faced a critical situation in the shadow of their own goal. They were more than equal to the challenge. On Kansas City's first play, Dyron Talbert batted Len Dawson's pass away. On the second play, Dawson was pressured again. He threw badly, and Mike Bass intercepted on the four-yard line. This has been the trademark of the new Redskins. Great defense. A defense that gets the ball for the offense. Now with the ball on their own four, Billy the Kid Kilmer would again try to attack the chief defense with his main weapon, the run. It appeared that Washington would go somewhere in this series when Larry Brown ripped through a gaping hole over left end for 25 yards.
but the Chiefs' defense shut off any further advances by the ground game. They forced a punt, and Dawson had to begin his second series by ducking heavy pressure and legging it to his own 40. But then, on third and short yardage, the Kansas City quarterback tried to flip to Otis Taylor and suffered his second interception. Only a diving tackle by Dave Hill stopped Pat Fisher from scoring. A repeat of this play reveals that Dawson wasn't really under pressure. His pass was simply a poor one. Nowhere near Otis Taylor. The Washington defense continued to make the big play as they have all season. It's interesting that the man who made it was Pat Fisher. The matchup of the tiny cornerback on the much taller Taylor was touted to be one of the keys of this game. Fisher had drawn the first blood in the duel. It took one play for Billy Kilmer to capitalize on the gift. Off a play fake to Charlie Haraway, he flipped to Charlie Taylor in the end zone for a touchdown. Taylor's signal made it official. Washington led Kansas City 7-0. Washington's kickoff strategy was to keep the ball away from speedy Warren McVay. But following the touchdown, it backfired as Kurt Knight's kick was taken by Robert Holmes, who returned it to the 45, giving his team excellent field position. On this series, Dawson, burned by the pass twice, stuck to the ground. Ed Podolak got a first down in enemy territory. But several plays later, on third down, Podolak was hit for a loss by Verlin Biggs. And from the 39-yard line, Jan Stenerud tried a field goal. The nerveless Norwegian had changed the score to 7-3. To and a nervous George Allen urged his team to regain momentum. Billy Kilmer responded to his coach's gesticulations by throwing a pass to Willie Lanier, who was to be one of the defensive heroes of this game. The interception was only the third this season thrown by Kilmer. At the start of the second quarter, Kansas City turned Kilmer's error into three points on another Stenerud field goal, and the score became 7-6. to six. With their lead cut to one and Kilmer's passing shaky, Washington stayed on the ground with negative results. The chief defense swarmed Brown and Haraway. Kurt Knight attempted a long field goal, and what he succeeded in doing in kickoffs, he failed to do on his field goal attempt. For his short kick was taken by Warren McVay, who weaved his way 51 yards to the Redskin 47. Despite McVay's big play, Kansas City again was unable to move the ball on George Allen's defense. Washington had a reprieve. Again, their running tandem of Brown and Haraway was stopped cold. So on third down, Kilmer came up with a change of pace. Charlie Taylor got way behind Emmett Thomas, and the result was a 49-yard pass play to the Chiefs' 33. Again, Kansas City got tough in their own territory, and on third down, Kilmer's pass for his other fine receiver, Roy Jefferson, was too low. Washington settled for a field goal, and the score was 10-6. to Only on ESPN Classic, America is cheering.
The Junction Boys. Behringer's performance is undeniably forceful. Now that's how it's done. His steeliest glare since Platoon. I will not lose. An emotional raw bone punk of a movie. You damn near killed my friend. He ain't quit. ESPN scores. A special presentation of ESPN's critically acclaimed original movie, The Junction Boys, 8 Eastern tonight on ESPN Classic. I heard about Vonage on the radio. When I ordered it, I got a Vonage adapter, a router, and I just connected it to my cable modem. When you're averaging $150 to $300 a month on phone bills, you can see why a plan for $40 is appealing. We're going to save at least $2,000 this year. I'm Dexter Green. I'm Christine Green, and we're Vonage customers. Call one Vonage help now. Get unlimited calling to all 50 states plus Canada for only $39.99 per month. Vonage, the broadband phone company. DSL or cable motor required. Attention inventors, manufacturers, and distributors. Have you got a new and innovative product that consumers must see on TV? Then Amazing Inventions wants your product to feature on national television. Car products, cooking products, cleaning products, cosmetics, sporting goods, any amazing invention. Call 1-888-275-5177 for free information. Housewares, hardware, home improvement, any amazing invention. Call 1-888-275-5177. Operators are standing by. If you have an amazing invention, then call all amazing inventions now. On the Chiefs series, Dawson continued to have his difficulties passing against Washington's zone defense, which was masterful in disguising their coverage in the first half. With slightly over a minute left in the half, Washington took over on their 29, and Kilmer began an aerial barrage that had the Chiefs reeling. After passes to his tight end, Jerry Smith and Charlie Taylor put them on the Chief 36, Billy the Kid, with less than a minute to go, shot a perfect pass off Taylor's chest. He made the grab and streaked into the end zone. With shocking suddenness, Washington had increased their lead to 17 to 6. The Chief cheerleaders urged their team on, but time in the half ran out. The Redskins' sudden score was a costly one, however. Charlie Taylor had fractured his ankle on the brilliant play and will be lost for two months. His performance, however, had changed the complexion of a close game. As the half came to an end, each team had run 32 plays, but there the resemblance ended. Washington had three times as much yardage. The most telling figures were in passing, where the Redskins' defense had hurried and harassed Len Dawson so effectively that he completed only one of ten passes for the grand total of minus seven yards. So completely was Hank Stram's aerial circus curtailed by the Washington defenders that none of the Chiefs' ends had caught a pass. As George Allen's charges made their way to the locker room at halftime, they knew they had control of the game. They were equally aware, however, that the ankle injury to Charlie Taylor would be a serious handicap in the half yet to come. The herd is constantly migrating, driven by instinct to where the signal is weakest. The antelope live as they always have, man's unwitting accomplice in making coast-to-coast walkie-talkies possible, bred to instantly relay radio signals as they frolic, graze, and even mate across the vast reaches of America. No, that's not how we did it. Introducing Nextel's coast-to-coast -coast walkie-talkie. Now that's a walkie-talkie. Inside's the difference. It's what's inside that makes the difference. Between just handling the road, attacking, and scorching the pavement. Between just moving and riding curves like you're on rails. Between just going and tearing the wind in half. The 227 horsepower, turbocharged, all-wheel drive, Subaru WRX. Subaru, driven by what's inside. I travel all over going to Scottish festivals, and I always stay at Motel 6. I get to rest, save money, and I'm very comfortable. That makes one of us. We'll leave the light on for you and a core hotel. One big time dirt and odor gone, new Neutrogena Men Power Scrub Bar has it wrapped up. The washcloth and deodorant bar in one. Special texture scrubs deep down, devours odor. Want to feel a new kind of clean? Neutrogena Men Power Scrub Deodorant Bar has it wrapped up. 
We working now, D. We working now. That's seven right there. This is what makes a man right here. Pain is only temporary. Give me one more. Next! With the Chiefs trailing 17 to 6 at the half, the standing room only crowd anxiously awaited the second half kickoff. But Charlie Taylor's touchdown had given the Redskins momentum, and their special team sustained it by stopping Robert Holmes' return. The Redskins' defense, too, continued to harass Lenny Dawson. On the first play of the second half, Jimmy Jones, number 82, subbing for an injured Verlin Biggs, got to Dawson. But then Dawson suddenly turned momentum back the other way. Unable to pass it all in the first half, Dawson began to find the mark. Otis Taylor made his initial catch of the game. Then Dawson picked out his other wide receiver, rookie Elmo Wright, and fired a strike to the Chiefs' first draft pick. Another view of this big gainer shows that Dawson set up and threw quickly. He fired past a lunging defender right into Wright's hands. Though he was finally having success in the air, Dawson kept the skin's defense honest with a run, and Podolak carved out another chunk of 20. And with it first and 10 on the Redskins' 25, Lenny the Cool got hot again. With plenty of time to throw, he fired another strike to Otis Taylor, this time for a touchdown. Hank Stram's big play attack had looked well-oiled for the first time in the game, and the Chiefs now trailed 17-13. Momentum is perhaps the key intangible in pro football, and the Chiefs' defense sustained it on the Redskins' first offensive series of the second half. Larry Brown could not break away at all. And unlike the first half, Billy Kilmer was unable to convert the third down play as Washington's first series went nowhere. But Kansas City's offense for the rest of the third quarter was unable to keep their early momentum. The revamped Redskins defense was no fluke. George Allen had dug into his former team for linemen and linebackers. The secondary, however, remained intact, except for Rich Pettibone, and number 37, Pat Fisher, was its leader. At 5'9", Fisher gave away eight inches to Otis Taylor, yet played him tough. However, when the Redskins were in a zone, and when he had time, Dawson found Taylor open, and the big O with the ball is one of the toughest receivers there is to corral. Most of the quarter, Dawson was pressured and pounded by the front four. The Redskins' defense had stopped the Chiefs' momentum and in the process gave their offense good field position throughout this quarter. It was becoming more evident, however, that the Redskins' offense was in trouble because they couldn't establish a consistent running game. Kilmer did convert two big third down plays on this drive, though, and moved the ball from midfield to the Chiefs' 30. The second went to Boyd Dowler, who had entered the game for Charlie Taylor. Dowler is good, but there is no substitute for a superstar. 
Inside their 30, the Chiefs' defense does overtime. A team may pile up yardage on them between the 20s, but the Chiefs have proven over the years that it's another matter to score on them. On third down from the 26, however, the Redskins betrayed themselves when Mac Alston dropped a pass that in retrospect became one of the big plays of the game. It was a big play because on third down, Boyd Dowler too failed to hang on to Kilmer's throw, and on fourth down, Kurt Knight would miss from the 33. Instead of having the ball on the three, the Redskins came up empty, though they still led by four. Late in the quarter, Kilmer did take his team in for another shot, and the man who led Washington was Charlie Haraway. The Chiefs' defense was keying on Larry Brown, and Kilmer wisely used Haraway to perfection, first on a flare, and then on a draw, down to the Chiefs' 20, as the third quarter ended. But on a third and three from the Chiefs' 14, a bad snap put any hopes of a Redskin touchdown on ice. They had to settle for a field goal, and a seven-point lead with 14 minutes to play. But for Washington, the sun, which had shone so brightly on them most of the game, was about to set. First day on the job, huh? Right behind you. I envy you, kid. You're going to be building the best cars Buick has ever built. So be proud. Be precise. And treat it like the craft it is. Any questions? Yeah. Is it true this place is haunted? Quality is alive and well at a car company called Buick. Hi, I'm George Hamilton, and I like things toasted. They oven toasted the flavor Ritz into a whole new kind of chip. Mm. New Ritz chips. They're toasted. And believe me, I know toasted. USA stars reveal the story. This was our tournament. Go! Of the unforgettable final versus China. Classic big ticket, 9 p.m. September 17th, followed by an encore presentation the 18th, only on ESPN Classic. 1970. With the Redskins leading 20 to 13 with 14 minutes to play, Dawson again reverted to his long passing game. At first, it didn't work, as Ron McDowell grabbed Dawson on his own 10. But the whole theory of Hank Stram's big play offense is to bomb and bomb again until it works. You may miss 9 of 10, but that one gets you on the board quick. This is exactly what happened. Dawson kept going long and finally hit Elmo Wright for 50 yards. An isolated view of Lenny Dawson on the play showed the cool chief quarterback somewhat pleased at the result. Two plays later, Dawson went back to Wright and hit him for the score. Wright ran his own special pattern once in the end zone, the Elmo Shuffle.
The quick-striking Chiefs had again turned momentum 180 degrees, and the game was now tied at 20. With 10 minutes left, Kilmer was content to stick to game plan, even though the Chiefs had stifled their ground game. Haraway and Brown soon found again there was no place to run, no place to hide against Curly Culp and company. Without the threat of Charlie Taylor, Kilmer went for shorter passes. But an isolated view of Kilmer showed the results to be negative. The Chiefs' defense had held again. With eight minutes left, Dawson began what would be the biggest drive of the day and perhaps of the season. He went right for Taylor and got an interference call to his own 46. Then surprisingly, Dawson went to his ground game for six straight plays. This is another virtue of the big play attack. He had the defense looking pass all day, and he crossed them up with runs around the flanks six straight times, with Podolak and McVeigh doing the work. The defense now thoroughly confused, Dawson jumped on them for one final shocker. A deep post to none other than Otis Taylor, covered man for man by Fisher. It was no contest. A perfect pass, an amazing reception, and the Kansas City Chiefs had taken the lead. On a repeat, watch Dawson fake to Wendell Hayes to pull in the secondary and keep his eye on his target despite a charging lineman. His pass was true, thrown high and away from the defender. Taylor's beautiful one-hand catch was the capper to another great day for the seven-year man from Prairie View. Taylor is not the Chief's tallest man, but he is the biggest Chief of them all. He has consistently made the big plays that have turned games around, and he was on the verge of winning another one for Kansas City. The big O, Otis Taylor, and the big D, the Chief's defense. Kilmer tried vainly to rally his team with two minutes left, but in the end, this was not to be the Redskins' day. Kilmer's receivers dropped passes, and the full fury of the Chiefs' front four dropped Kilmer. On this final series of the game, Billy Kilmer relived some of the frustration he had known in the past but had forgotten in his first five victories of 1971. Fourth and 15. The Chiefs dug in for one last stand. Billy Kilmer dug in for one last try. It was all over, and cornerback Jim Marsalis let everyone know it. As he watched his offense run down the final seconds, Coach Hank Stram must have been well satisfied. The little genius had done it again. Stram, Lenny the Cool, the Big O, and a rock-hard defense had masterminded this victory. Stram's first ever over an NFC team in regular season. Suddenly, there were no more undefeated teams in pro football. Fate had finally dealt George Allen's over-the-hill gang a slippery hill, and they had tumbled down to their first defeat. It was a day when the over-the-hill gang met the mountain men, and the mountain prevailed. A day that brought back the old proverb, if at first you don't succeed, throw it to Otis. Final score, Chiefs 27, Redskins 20.